Dit is Papa Alfa Nul, ik hoor Tengel. Ik hoor voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag, 29 augustus 2016. Dit is het beeld van maandag. Vandaag is een morse code, dat is wel een herhaling. Uh, maar er is wel een nieuw SSTV-plaatje met een close-up van een waterdier. De foto is gemaakt door een mede-amateur. Het doet vandaag nog een beetje kalm aan, dus ik smokkel een beetje. Maar vandaag een uh, stuk van James Wade, Whisky Bravo 8, Sierra India Whisky. Hij is van de Morse Telegraph Club. Dat is een vereniging van voormalig beroepsmatige telegrafisten. Ze houden contact met elkaar via een virtueel telegrafienetwerk, inclusief lijnstroom, dat via een speciaal interface werkt en via internet. James vertelt iets over zijn organisatie en over iets waar de meeste amateurtelegrafisten niets van af weten. Namelijk dat er twee verschillende Morse-alfabetten hebben bestaan die tot ver in de jaren 80 in de VS gebruikt zijn. De eerste is de American Morse Code, die werd vooral door de beroepstelegrafisten in de VS gebruikt. En de tweede is de Continental Code. De laatste van die twee is wat wij als centamateurs gebruiken. De uitzending is vandaag iets langer. Move on to other areas, but uh, the Morse Telegraph Club was founded in 1943. Uh, originally as a fraternal organization for retired uh, railroad and commercial telegraphers. And uh, it's evolved over the years into a historical association, and uh, its purpose is to perpetuate the knowledge of the traditions and history of telegraphy and the telegraph industry. Now, it's important to understand at the outset, and that's something many people don't know throughout the world, and, and likewise many radio amateurs don't know, is that there are two different Morse codes. Uh, the original Morse code, as developed by Morris and Vail, is called the American Morse Code. Uh, and the American Morse Code is somewhat different than the international code that radio amateurs use. Uh, as originally conceived, it had, uh, first of all, spaced characters. For example, uh, Dedadit is R in the international code that's used by radio amateurs in the maritime services and the militaries and so forth. Uh, but in the American Morse code, that would be an F. And uh, likewise, an R in American Morse code would actually be dit, dit, dit. It'd actually have an internal space that's internal to the character. And so there's about, oh, uh, say, uh, 10 or so of the letters that are different. Uh, there's some letters that have alternate meaning, uh, meanings. As that is, there's some Morse characters that have alternate meanings in the American Morse code. And the numeric. And so this is the original Morse code that was developed by, by Morris and Vail. Now, uh, when they laid the first undersea cables, uh, the, the space characters turned out to be difficult to dis uh, distinguish. Uh, they didn't understand these concepts of, uh, you know, reactants and long undersea cables and, you know, the signal distortions that might occur. And they realized as they worked with the first successful undersea cables that they could not use the original Morse code because they couldn't distinguish the different dash lengths. There's three different dash lengths, and they couldn't distinguish these spaced characters. So a uh, uh, committee meeting was held on the continent of Europe, uh, and it developed what's now called the International Morse Code, or actually, technically, the Continental Code. The Continental Code eliminated the spaced characters, and it eliminated the three different dash lengths that uh, exist in the original American Morse code. And it is the continental code that radio amateurs use, and that is generally used throughout the world. Now, about the time that this occurred, the American telegraph industry, that is primarily in the U.S., Canada, uh, Mexico, and the like, was so well established that it was impractical to retrain all these telegraph operators in the new international standard. So the American commercial and railroad telegraph industries stayed with the original American Morse code. And this continued to be used in commercial applications into the 1980s uh, when landline or commercial telegraphy was uh, finally eliminated entirely uh, just through technological progress and the like. So, you know, this is a real long and complex way of saying that there are really two American, or there's two Morse codes that were commonly used in North America, one of which is this older American Morse code, and that was used by commercial and railroad telegraphers, say, for example, people who worked for Western Union, Postal Telegraph, uh, you know, the stock brokerages, uh, press services, things of that nature. And then there's also this international Morse code, properly called the Continental Code, 
which is used by radio amateurs, maritime services, etc. So our organization focuses on the history of the telegraph industry and telegraphy at its primary emphasis is this, this older Morse code. Uh, many of our members are retired from uh, the railroad and commercial telegraph industry. And then, of course, we have people who are also members because they're uh, amateur historians or professional historians or they're radio amateurs and they want to learn about the history of telegraphy, how, how it evolved, and, and, you know, the whole, the whole historical foundation for uh, uh, Morris and, uh, and the like. So that sort of describes the foundation of the Morris Telegraph Club and gives a little bit of background into why, you know, it's a unique organization. Um, so at, at this point in time, um, in your organization, how many people do you think there are that are non-radio amateurs that are, um, that are members and participate in, in the activities? I would have to estimate that, but I would say probably about 30 to 40 percent uh, were primarily commercial or railroad telegraph operators. Uh, the remaining membership is, um, you know, radio amateurs, uh, historians, people of that nature that have an interest in the technology. Now, keep in mind that many of the people who worked in the commercial and railroad telegraph industry are what you might call bilingual. They also served in, say, World War II, etc., and they were trained also in the Continental Code. But their primary background in telegraphy is related to working in the uh, railroad uh, or commercial telegraph industry. So is it, if a person is very familiar with, uh, and, and does, you say they're proficient at CW at whatever speed, okay, um, if someone starts sending the other code to them, um, how confusing does it get? I mean, I mean, if there's only a, a few characters that are that are out, it seems to me they would have almost uh, uh, little relevance. In other words, I think you'd be wind up getting you know ninety percent of the content anyhow. Well, I think that uh, you know certainly a someone who's proficient in international code. Uh, that is, by proficient, I mean he can treat it as a language. Uh, you'll find that as one learns telegraphy, whatever version it is, um, there's a, you go from essentially the initial phase where you're sort of translating in your head, and then over time it evolves into a natural language. And that's the point where, say, an operator can copy in his head, treat it just like he would the spoken language, uh, you can only you know you don't need only maybe write down or make notes about information that that's necessary. But essentially, he listens to Morris in the same way he does to a natural language, and he comprehends it in the same manner. So that's what I would call a proficient operator. An operator at that stage can learn American Morris quite easily. Uh, it usually just takes you know a few weeks of, of study. Now, keep in mind that. Uh, some of the letters are different. Some of the uh, some of them have alternate meanings, meanings which really can confuse a guy. For example, uh, you know, a J in American Morse code is da 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 it, and <laughs> R is da 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 it, and you know, so on. And so, and then of course you have the space characters. Y is did it did it, Z is did it it, and so this can really throw off uh, an operator, particularly. As operators go up in speed, they tend to hear whole words, they tend to hear whole patterns. And so yeah, there is some effort involved in picking up the American Morse code, but certainly a proficient operator can do it with relative ease. I mean, you have to put a little effort in, but, you know, one can learn it, and they can become uh, quite uh, proficient and comfortable with it. Well, I know back when they were giving the live um, CW exams on the FCC tests, um, what they did at that particular, or there was different methods by which they did it, but at the period of time when I took the test, they sent an entire section or a whole QSO, uh, and then they would give you a multiple choice test. Said, well, you know, uh, what was the guy's name, and what was his QTH, and what was the signal of one person, and uh, they would ask these. I mean, you had to you had to know the answers. I mean, there's no way you could fake it, but uh, you didn't have to know. 
let's put it this way. If you missed a few characters here and there, that wasn't counted against you because they were asking you about the text. Uh, prior to that, I understand that... Uh, the website van de Morse Telegraph Club is simpelweg www.morsetelegraphclub.org. En Telegraph Club, dat schrijf je met PH. Morse, telegra, ph, club, punt, uh, Op de site is bijzonder veel historische informatie te vinden over met name het beroep van de telegrafist in de VS. Onder het kopje switchboard links kun je onder het kopje internet telegrafie info vinden over hoe je mee kunt doen aan het virtuele land telegrafie netwerk van de voormalige beroepstelegrafisten. Dat kan in beide alfabetten. Er zijn ook veel Australische voormalig telegrafisten lid en die zijn ook gewoon met ons continental alfabet. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald.